It's so fun to see so many happy faces uh, gathered in the same place. Really great. I'm going to talk about this fantastic thing called terminology again. Um, every one of you, I think, have heard me talk about terminology. And we have also heard from some of the speakers before here the importance of terminology. And for some of you, I will give you a new angle when I talk about this thermograph, which is a rather new tool we have developed at Fodina. It is not. Well, it's related to Acrolinks in the sense that we have an integration, but apart from that, it's a pure Fodina product. And it's a product to be used for developing, building, and maintaining terminologies. So, let's move on. Some people think that this is terminology. It's grey, it's dusty, it's boring, I don't know. But that's the impression I get when I t talk to some people. But for Fudina, I think it's this. <laughs> it's a roller coaster, amusement parks. Yes, this is great, isn't it? Someone disagree? <laughs> Don't think so. Okay, first I had a question here. Do you need terminology? But I changed that into exclamation mark instead and say that this, you need terminology. And I'm going to talk and give you some examples on why you need it. And for some of you, I just say that uh, repetition is the mother of all knowledge, because pe many of you have seen some of these examples before. But if, if we look at translation, <coughs> most of you have seen this example. The company has three sentences here that they send for translation to another language, let's say Swedish. <coughs> and the translation agency translates it, the sentences, and puts the result in a translation memory. Sometime later, the same company sends three new sentences for translation. And they are very similar to the first three ones, but they are not exactly the same because there are differences in terminology. Apart from the red, words here, it's exactly the same sentences, and they should have been 100% matches against the translation memory if they were exactly equal. But now we have matching grades to the right here, 74%, 93%, and 71% against the translation memory. And let's assume that uh, the translation agency uh, charges you with 150 for each new word that they translate. But if you have a matching grade against a memory that is higher than 74%, uh, then you have a reduction in price. So you just pay 90 euro for matches 75 to 99 and so on. But anyway, if we, if we look at these three new sentences, the ones with the red words in them, <coughs> They contain together 27 words. You have to pay different prices depending on matching here. And it would cost you 3870 Swedish krona to have these sentences translated the second time. And if you translate into 30 languages, we're talking about 1160 krona to have those translated. So these small differences make up a rather huge cost for the company, I would say. If instead the writer would have written exactly the same sentence the second time, it would have been 100% matches if you send them to the translation agency. If you, if you don't pay anything for 100% matches, you would actually save 1161 krona if these sentences were exactly the same the second time. If you pay for 100% matches, which we recommend, then normally you just pay, pay some 20% of a full word price, but you would still save 918 krona on these three sentences tra being translated into 30 languages. Isn't that true, Jens? Yeah. That's true, says the translation expert from CBG here. That's good. <laughs> so it... Uh, uh, the prices get very high for translations, and this is really unnecessary if you have control of your terminology and you assist the writers to use the correct terminology every time. <coughs> uh, a writer support case. One writer is writing about Airstream and, and writes a topic where he uses Airstream. 
And the second writer thinks about airflow. He starts using airflow instead. It's basically synonyms we are talking about here. And when they publish the content here and they take the two topics and bring them together, then you get inconsistency. And probably you will have the same problem with translation as we saw in the previous example. You need to have control of your terminology. You need to know your synonyms in order to be able to support writers to just use the preferred term. So, if someone is writing this, and what we are supposed to call it, autonomous car instead of self-driving car, you would like Acrolinks to actually mark this as forbidden and suggest this instead. But in order to do that, you need to know this. You need to know synonyms that writers could possibly use instead of the preferred term. And you need to decide which is the preferred term and which are the deprecated ones. That's important. Findability has been mentioned before here, and I understand there is an interest for findability. And uh, this is an example that some people in the room might recognize, perhaps. Uh, it's a company who sells things on the internet, and if someone searches for Porslinstvetstel, they find six things they can buy there. But they, if they instead use Porslinshandfart, they only find two products to buy. Isn't that true? <laughs> and that isn't great if you are living on e-business. So, um, people might search for these two words in this sense. And in the e-shop, they are used this way. But you need to keep track of this and know that these are synonyms so that you could either include synonyms in the product descriptions so that external search engine, um, uh, engines like Google can show you all products that contains either Puslinsvetstel or Puslinsanfot, or you can t teach an internal search engine that these are actually synonyms and make sure that the all products containing any of those ones are shown to the buyer in this case. So you need to keep control of your terminology and know your synonyms. This is an example. I have anonymized the UI of this, but some people might recognize this PLM system that is used. Let's say we have a use case now. An engineer wants to create the part and is supposed to fill out the name here of this part. So he presses this button and up comes a search window where you can search for a part name that is allowed because this company has control of the terms in the sense that they know what product names are allowed to be used. But let's say now that the engineer here uh, types in something Excited wheel, that's what he wants to call this part that he's designing now. Nope, says the PLM, it's not allowed. We can't find any product <coughs> names that is called Excited wheel. Okay, then I try for Excited star, nope, can't find it. EXE then, no, nah. okay, can't find that part either in the allowed terms here. Okay, the designer decides it's a bracket. <laughs> Have we seen this before? Anyone knows about lots of brackets? <laughs> Triangular, round, square, any size, and, and, and uh, uh, look, it's a bracket. <coughs> but let's say now that the PLM system knew this, that um, some people call it exciter wheel, but what they really should call it is sensor wheel instead. And now if the designer or uh, engineer here looks for exciter wheel and gets the answer no, I don't have that, but did you mean sensor wheel? So that actually when the engineer is searching for exciter wheel, he will get the suggestion sensor wheel. Would that be good? I think so. Once again, you need to know your synonyms. That's important, and that's what I want to gain at, that you need to know your synonyms, or synonyms that writers, engineers, buyers, anyone could use. So there are many reasons to keep track and, and control of your terminology and I showed you some, I think, crystal clear examples of when you can use it. But there are other reasons as well, as you see. The natural question. 
how do I build my terminology? And that's really what I'm supposed to talk about. Well, you should use the thermograph, the tool and process that we have developed at Fudina. What other ways are possible to build a, a terminology like this, to keep track of synonyms that could be used, decide on which you should use in your documentation and in your texts? Well, you could ask the terminologist to sit down and write his experiences, his or her experiences. It might take a time for Scania or Volvo to define all the terms and all the possible synonyms by just typing them down. I think it's impossible. You could try some crowdsourcing and ask people to send in things. I know that A and B are synonyms and sometimes used as synonyms. But I think that's also a, a tricky thing. Especially if you have thousands of terms, then it's really complicated to gather all this information about your terminology. So we think that the automated extraction from either your own texts, whatever text it is that you have already created, where you have synonyms, I promise you, or you could actually look at the internet and say that I want to look at this site, or I want to extract terminology from uh, ISO standards or something like that, and we can take that together and use that as input to our thermograph process. And now I'm going to show you a little more details on how we do this. <coughs> Because when we are helping a customer to build the terminology, we start with extraction of existing terms from <coughs> any sources, really. It could be documents you have, translation memories, existing term lists, uh, standard documents, websites, anywhere, really. And we extract the terms and put them in some kind of bucket, as we call them. And... Um, in that, we basically have terms that we have extracted. We know the frequencies, how many times we found the terms in the different sources and so on. If someone wants to know differences between two different areas, perhaps in the first packet we just store the terms that we extracted from technical documentation, and in the second packet we keep terms that we extract from market documentation, for instance. Then we can keep track of which terms are primarily used in technical doc and which are primar primarily used in marketing documentation. And that could be interesting when you want to standardize your terms and decide which synonyms should be allowed be to be used and which should not be allowed to be used. But once we have done this extraction, we put all the terms into the thermograph, and that is a web-based tool that uh, Fudina hosts for the customers, and the customers access them through the internet. And what you basically see in here is clusters, and the cluster is a number of terms that we have found here, that we think are <coughs> synonyms. And right now, when you look at this at it, it, as a cluster, it's just a suggestion from our tool that these might be synonyms in your world, but sometimes we overgenerate and sometimes we undergenerate. So this might not be the exact truth in your company. So the first, first thing you need to do for each of the clusters that the tool presents to you is to view them and perhaps filter the clusters and bring them in some kind of order in how, how you want to work with them. And then you need to adjust them. It might be, as I said, that we overgenerate we put together terms that are actually not synonyms, and then you just break the connection between here and separate one term from the rest of the cluster. But once you have done that work, you go on to the next step and you create the concept. That means that you formalize, in this case, that these five terms belong to each other. They are synonyms in your world. And now you can add metadata, you can write definitions on the concept, and you set status on the different terms and perhaps notes and things that you need to do. You send the clusters or the concepts uh, on validation to subject matter experts that can provide their opinion on this. And once you're ready, you publish it. And publishing is kind of making sure this is saved as a version of a term concept, so to say. Next thing you can do is to actually sync this to Acrolinks. So what you actually do then is take the decisions you made in the thermograph and move them or copy them to Acrolinks. And then you can start using them for lookup, for checks, 
or whatever you need them for. Maybe you need them for findability purposes in PLM systems or e-business shops or whatever you have. So that is basically the process that we suggest. Any questions so far? Yes, I have one. I'm just wondering. Okay, it's just, you know, helping a little bit. But other than that, uh, what's really the difference between Thermograph and, you know, what you do today in Aquilings, whereby you suss out the approved term, or then you see all the synonyms, and then you decide which one should be which. I mean, it's just different platforms, and maybe a little, like I said, a little help from some friends here with the concept and metadata, but that's basically it. The, the big thing you get with Thermograph is actually finding that these terms are probably synonyms. Where do you find that otherwise? Well, you can find it on ah, sorry. In the cluster at the top there, I'm tall, I know that, but I'm not tall enough here. But in there, in the middle, uh, these uh, dotted uh, balls in there, you get the relations between here, that these are possibly synonyms. How would you find that otherwise? If you just extract terms here and you get 100,000 terms out here, how do you understand that hearing protection and ear defender are synonyms? Well, what happens is that, for example, we get documents, we look at them, in yeah. the past it was manual, but now we have started with term harvesting, <coughs> identify the terms, what they are, source them online or in some, uh, in like, you know, existing uh, terminology database in acronyms, and uh, group the synonyms. But how do you group them? How do you know this, that they are synonyms? Like I said, we source online, and then we speak to the uh, SMEs, yeah. How long does it take to, to sort out one of these, to find these uh, seven possible synonyms? If you, if you talk to people, if you have 100,000 terms, how do you do that? This is the speed here. We are using kind of AI-ish algorithms to find these possible synonym relations here. That's what you gain with the, with the thermograph. You get speed. And also, <coughs> I've done this the hard way, uh, 7,000 rows in an uh, Excel sheet. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> as far as I understand, you get the, the, the frequency also. Yep. Uh, so you get it more visible instead of having it in uh, Excel. But in the Excel, it was already synonym clustered. But nevertheless, you need to take decision. This should be here. This is not related to this concept at all. And making these decisions and having a system where you can see the decision you take and then utilize it downstream. That's hard in Excel, for instance. Yeah. And here, it's much more smoother. I'm going to show you because it's demo time. <laughs> this is the thermograph. Isn't it wonderful? Looks nice. Uh, actually, there is kind of a workflow in the thermograph where the first step is to look at the clusters. And here in this list here, we see clusters now. So each line represents one cluster. And if we look at, for instance, forklift down here, it says that we have 15 different terms that we have brought together that might be synonyms. And out of these 15 different synonyms, they exist 111 times in the material where we ex uh, extracted the terms. If I click here now, I will show this cluster in two ways. First of all, I have a graphical view or a table view up here, where I can read uh, metadata about the terms that we extracted. So, for instance, a term, uh, sample text, sample sentences where the text, uh, the term was found. We have frequency information, language, and so on. But we also have a graphical view here, where you can see all these, how we think they are related to each other. And um, 
it's possible here to just look at the graph or just the table or see both at the same time. For each term here, the size of the balls here, by the way, they are, uh, in this case, it's depending on the frequency. So the most frequent of these terms that we found in the material from which we extracted is forklift. And if I hover over here, I get some more information, the, the context sentences where we found it, and so on. And the uh, lines in between here are, of course, uh, uh, an indication that uh, a pallet truck and a bed truck is possibly synonyms to each other. As I said before, when we extract from large uh, sources, we might end up with hundreds of thousands of terms here that are clustered together. Here we have 30 different uh, synonyms that we cluster together. Uh, and so on. So it might be a very long list of, of concepts here or clusters here that you need to work with. And what we can do then is that we can create kind of lists of, of um, uh, what we call working sets so that you can actually prioritize the work you're doing. So we can group these clusters into different areas. For instance, clusters that seems to contain marketing terms clusters that looks like they are more technical terms, and so on. So you could have different working sets to work with. In this case, I just have Wikipedia, because we extracted these terms from Wikipedia regarding vehicles, I think, or something like that, wasn't it? Trucks, okay. So it's just a part of all the terms here. <coughs> But anyway, uh, the first thing you, knew, you need to do as a, a user of this system is to look at one cluster at a time. So you select one. You can, if you like, you can have multiple clusters shown at the same time, but it's kind of complicated to look at it then. Uh, so we just focus on one of these ones. And then you need to think a little bit about, are these actual synonyms in your world? And uh, let's say now that... Uh, bed truck and pallet truck, they are not synonyms. So you just say delete selected here. And now you separate these two into two different clusters. But anyway, I think that the pallet truck and a hand truck, they are probably synonyms. So what I need to do now here is to actually put this one on this one. And then I'm creating a new relation here. And now I can cut away some things that I don't like to have here anymore, like that. Now I have a nice cluster here where I believe all of these uh, terms are synonyms now in my world. So what I do next step here is that I create a concept. Now I formalize this. I get the confirmation view here that are actually all of these ones synonyms. Yes, they are. So I created a concept and now it disappears from here because now it's not only, it's not a cluster. A cluster is something that our algorithms have put, has put together. Now it's more formalized. So I need to go over to the concepts view here. And now I only have one single concept here. I click this and then I have a graphical view of, of the terms related. So here I have all the terms. I have the concept itself. I can write the definition here. Vehicle to move goods, something like that. And then I can go through all the terms I have here in the list here, because these are the terms of the concept, and set the status. I can say that uh, this is deprecated. This is pre the preferred one. Deprecated. Takes a while when you can't see look at the screen in front of you. You have to do it uh, from the side here. It's a little bit more tricky then. It was a long list. Wrong cluster I, de I decided for. But I think some people should recognize the forklift in, in the room here. Do we have anyone who recognizes that? <laughs> because it's been much debated in some places. Okay, now I'm ready with this. I've set the statuses. I could have more attributes that I want to add here if I like, but this is good for now. 
And now I could either say that this is ready for validation, and then there is a validation process in uh, the thermograph as well, so that I can actually send out a batch of concepts to subject matter experts to get feedback on, on this, uh, these different uh, concepts that I'm, I, have, I have prepared. But I don't have time to demo that right now, so I go on and say that this is ready for publication directly. Question. Yep. And validation, what kind of format is it pr produced there? Uh, it, it makes kind of a batch of concepts, uh, put them together, and then... Um, um, no, it's, you're using uh, this interface here. So there is no, uh, currently we have no mechanism to, to uh, signal to the SMEs that they are supposed to go in here. So you have to send out an email. But once they log on to the thermograph and they have the, the validation role, then they will see a list of the batches that they need to validate. And then they just open one concept at a time, look at the information that is provided, and then they say a comment and uh, good or bad. And then there is also a view for the terminologist later on here to actually um, look at the comments that came in from the subject matter experts. So you see for each concept, you see all the comments at the same time from all the reviewers. And if everyone says that this is good, then you can go on and publish it. If someone has an opinion, then you need to go back and start work with it a little bit more. And all the reviewers have to have a license? To uh, the way we have licensed it is that either you choose to have validation on or off, and if you say on, then you have to pay a monthly fee to have it activated, but then you can have as many validators as you like. Okay. Uh, ready for publication. Did I, didn't I press the ready for publication button? Updated. Now we have it up here, the forklift concept. I select it, I get the chance to see this once again, and I publish it. So now it's actually published, and now I need to connect to the accruing system. Now I have a problem. I can't see what it says over there. Uh, I should be my, my box. So I actually press sync here. And now I get a, a, a summary here of, of uh, information. If I have any new entries, because this synchronization is wo working both ways. So if I have any terms in Acrolinks, that someone, for instance, has have proposed in Acrolinks, then, uh, then I can synchronize that up to the thermograph and actually work with it, find synonyms, just I, I like I showed you before here. Um, but in this case, I just have one new concept in the thermograph here uh, that I can synchronize to, to Acrolinks, i.e. create it in Acrolinks. I can get details about it. I have the forklift here. I can look at the details of that etc, etc. So I have control of what information I actually move from Thermograph to Acrolinks. I accept all of these once, the single only concept here, and submit it. And now the fantastic idea is that when I go over to the Acrolinks dashboard here, and look here, I can find them in here. Uh, and as you can see, the statuses have been transferred, and the definition has been transferred, and so on. So this concept is now ready for, to be used for checking content. But as always in Acrolinks, we need to reload the language server when we have created or modified any terms in the database here. So anyone have a fast joke here? Uh, we're waiting 30 seconds. <laughs> I don't have a job, but I have a question. Yes. What kind of sources do we use? Sources, when we extract the text, we can take almost anything. We don't like PDFs because it's hard to read with machines. What I mean is, the, for example, in this case, the uh, pallet truck and all the variations, they were 
from Wikipedia. Yeah. So uh, the definition sources, where do you get them? In this case, I just typed it in myself. But I mean, in general, do, do, is, are there some specific, you know, um, sources that you look for or things like that? Or do you just say internet and then it, that the purpose is to check everything in the internet or, or in the documents that you have to be It depends a little bit on what types of terms we are talking about. But if we do the work, we many times look at onelook.com. Onelook.com. That's a good place, we think, to find uh, definitions and things. Okay, the server configuration was reloaded, and now let's see. There we go. The hand track, that's deprecated, and the suggestion is to use this one instead. So, what I tried to prove, a little bit complicated, but anyway, that we can extract terms from Wikipedia, feed them into the thermograph, find the synonyms, let you do the work to decide which term is the preferred one and which are the deprecated ones. Make the decision, write definitions, notes, whatever you need, metadata in the thermograph, and then synchronize it into Acrolinks and make use of it for someone who is writing documentation to support them to use the correct terms. I also know that why you should do this. You should do it for getting consistency in your documentation, to increase findability, help people to find correct part names, etc., etc. There are many reasons to do this work, and we have the tool for you. And as I said also, we can do this two ways. Either we extract terminology from existing sources, your own documentation, web information, anything really, bring it into the thermograph. The other use case is that someone is proposing terms in Acrolinks, and we synchronize those proposed terms from Acrolinks up to the thermograph, add terms, synonyms that we have found in your material. You make the decisions again here, which is the preferred term. Was the proposal good, or maybe that should be a deprecated term and something else that you found among your existing terms should be the preferred one. And then you do the same process, perhaps validation of the concepts, and then you synchronize it out to Acrolinks again, and then it's available for checking. I think that's it. Questions? Yes? Is it also published to PLM system? Uh, we could actually, right now we just publish to Acrolinks, but we could generate net change reports, we could generate TBX files, we could generate almost anything really. And if it would be necessary to export to a PLM system, I guess we could do that as well. It depends on the PLM system, of course, if we have access to it and so on. But uh, uh, from a, a technical perspective, it should be possible, yes. So it's not out of the box? No, it's not. Right now, we just have a connection with Acrolinks. But I mean, it's an open platform. We could do whatever we would like to do with it. Yes? When you're analyzing this, uh, <coughs> Your, your application knows about English, so you know about... And Swedish. And Swedish. Yes. I know, you know about the plural and singular and all that stuff. Yes. We know.